let me check. Hello everyone. I'm just checking the live stream because with the new YouTube studio, I don't have an idea if everything is running well. Let me check. Um, All right, hello everyone. Welcome to this live stream. Um, sorry, I'm still trying to manage um, the whole live stream thing. Um, as you maybe heard in the beginning, a little bit me mumbling. In the new YouTube studio, I wasn't able to find the live stream tab. So I had to switch to the old live stream thingy uh, and find the chat. And, but I think everything is running right now. Audio, mic check, test test is also good, I believe. And yeah, welcome to this, um, I think it's episode nine live stream Q and A. Uh, thanks for joining the Q&A and I have gathered some questions already on Instagram. So I will start with uh, answering those questions and then I will get to the questions that are in the video chat. Uh, let me just pop in the video chat from YouTube. Move a little bit over so I am in frame. Um, all right, let's start with the first questions from Instagram. So let me just open Instagram. Um, hold on a second. So the first question is from FitLife30S. How much EDC do you carry? Is everything really needed? And that's a very good question. Um, with a lot of EDC, it's something that, or the amount of items that you carry in your pockets, um, slowly creeps in terms of items or the amount of items gets higher over time and not like on one day to the next, you suddenly have like 30 items in your pocket. So at first you obviously have your wallet and your phone. That's basic EDC. That's a basic amount of EDC items like everyone has. Oh, also keys. So those are the regular amount of EDC items in your pockets. And then you start adding maybe a knife or multi-tool. Um, for me, I started adding a multi-tool um, for the simple reason that I hated opening boxes with scissors or whenever I go to the trash uh, cans and have to throw away boxes, having a knife with you just for that reason to open all the sticky tape and then folding the boxes to put them into the trash can helps a lot. Um, also having like a screwdriver on your multi-tool or on your knife is actually something that I have been using quite a lot. Other people also drink a lot of uh, liquids out of bottles and need the bottle opener. So that's very important. And then after a while you start adding more stuff. For instance, I added a flashlight. Um, that's also something I added um, out of necessity for a different reason because I hated carrying like a bicycle light with me and then I attached there are these velcro um, loops that you can attach to your bicycle and then you can use a regular flashlight and have the flashlight on you when you're not riding your bicycle and um, also with your dogs or with my dogs when I'm outside at night it's always good to have like a flashlight. So that's already uh, five items five items that I have in my pockets. And then I added the 
Fisher space pen but I took that out because I didn't find it to be very comfortable to write with um, but that's also something I just added for comfort let's say it that way because in most offices there are pens but or there are no pens and then or if there are pens they don't write so it really depends if you actually need all those stuff but having the stuff is better than needing the stuff so um, I like having the stuff with me and being prepared opposed to not having like for instance a knife and then standing in front of a box and not being able to open it um, but obviously you don't always need all of the items in the EDC. By the way, I just have uploaded a new EDC series which will air tomorrow. Um, next question. Best wallet and why? Um, yeah, as I mentioned, new EDC series tomorrow. I think that episode will answer that question pretty well. Um, Oh, and that question was by a.s.shark. Next question is by lqmnh4kim. Uh, I know his name, but I'm not sure if he wants to mention it. So the question is, what's the max speed in kilometers per hour you ever rode on your MT-07? Um, the fastest I rode with that motorcycle was around 170 kilometers per hour. You can ride faster, but it's a so-called naked bike, so you don't have any wind protection. And the faster you go, obviously the more wind hits you in the face and on your chest. And um, yeah, it gets a little bit uncomfortable. So the fastest I rode on that bike was around 160, 170 kilometers per hour. Um, Dezo1 asked, reckon a bag that can replace my paint bag for graffiti, camera bag, EDC and diaper bag. Uh, hmm, interesting question. Um, diaper bag I honestly can't answer because I don't have any kids and I don't plan to have any kids so I never really researched for that kind of purpose. Um, so I assume that you mean a bag for all of those things. And that's quite a lot um, of items that you want to carry. So a spray can is about this high and this wide together with camera equipment and some EDC that would need a lot of space. Um, I would assume maybe at least 25 liters to 30 liters. So a carry on kind of backpack. Um, also, I would assume that um, you want to get to all of your stuff very easily. So a clamshell opening is preferable opposed to a roll top bag. Um, maybe the ATD one because that is roll top and clamshell. So if you have more cans then the roll top would allow you to um, expand the bag and carry more items. But if you want to lay everything out flat and see what you're packing then there is a clamshell other than that maybe the north uh, north street weekender clamshell opening backpack carry-on backpack i haven't reviewed that one um, but you can see it in the last um, roundup quick look video for carry-on bags um, but yeah i would say look in those 25 30 liter carry-on bags to find a bag that suits all of the stuff. Um, but I'm not 100% sure if you actually want a bag that fits all of the stuff. Um, also, I would recommend to get a carry-on bag and like a packing cube for your camera. 
uh, so you don't necessarily need to search for a dedicated camera bag. Um, the next question by He Shrugged, do you have a favorite brand? Um, dep depends what you mean uh, or what category you mean. Um, although even if there was a category, I don't have a particularly uh, brand that I favor um, for bags at least. I love Gorok bags, I love opposed this design, um, I also like Black Amber, but there isn't like a brand that I really like, um, especially because I always consider that every item, even if it's really good, there's always some drawbacks, some flaws for you personally or for me. and. It's always a matter of can you live or work around those drawbacks. That is why I, or that's the reason how I review or how I structure all my videos. I always try to concentrate on the negatives, not because I want to make that item bad, but because I feel you as a viewer can better evaluate if that item is actually for you. Um, most of the positives you already figured out via the web website and the feature list, but you don't know the negatives. So I like to concentrate on the negatives for you to evaluate. Um, that is why I don't particularly have favorite brands because there's always something with those items. Um, yeah, but yeah, I realize I didn't really answer the question properly, but I hope that is sufficient for you. Um, the next question by I'm Ofero. Thanks for your great videos. Thanks for watching. Uh, now my question, have you tried any of the Rio bags? Why or why not? Um, I have seen those bags, but I haven't tested them. Not because I don't want to, I just, haven't gotten around uh, to them. Um, next question by Dan Pon. Is there, is there a store in Europe that we can buy some good quality backpacks? Um, unfortunately, there is not like, like a store that carries a lot of brands per se. Um, further, I sometimes believe that Germany or Europe no, mostly Germany isn't that interested in bags yet. Um, most of the people consider these brands uh, or these, these bags that we all enjoy to be too expensive and they haven't, at least that's what I feel at the moment in Germany, that most people don't really realize the necessity or the what a good bag can bring to your life um, or how important a good bag is, especially considering that most of the people carry an expensive laptop in their bags. Um, so that I assume that is why there isn't a good store that carries all of those brands or backpacks in Europe yet. Um, as for companies, where you can get good bags in Europe. I can recommend Heimplanet. They are in Germany. Their headquarters is actually in Hamburg. Um, I heard a lot of good things about the brand Ping Pong, which is in Berlin, but I haven't tested one of their bags yet. Um, and if I remember correctly, Attitude Supply is in Italy, um, but I'm not 100% sure. Um, oppose this is, I'm not sure where they are exactly, to be honest, I don't remember, um, but they are somewhere around Europe, if I am not mistaken. Um, yeah, those are some companies that I remember right off the top of my head that, that are in Europe, where you potentially don't have to pay that much uh, shipping fees 
and or custom fees. Um, but I hope that more companies will get, or I, at least I hope that there will be a store in Germany or in Europe that will sell all those brands that we as bag enthusiasts enjoy. Um, next question by Gary, Gary Viljaman. Um, your Grail wrist, wrist watch. Um, I still enjoy my Steinhardt Ocean 500 Titanium. I don't wear watches at the moment because it's really hot outside. Um, although I'm wearing a sweater, <laughs> I'm not sure why I'm wearing that actually. Um, it was a little bit colder uh, this morning. Um, but yeah, the Steinhardt watch is great, but Honestly, if you want a great watch, a great automatic watch, I can highly recommend to go with Seiko or Seiko. I'm not, I always forget, do you say Seiko or Seiko? I'm not sure. Um, but those watches are awesome. Great value, um, awesome look, awesome build, great movement at a very affordable price. I can highly recommend those. Um, their part. Why is every EDC nerd carrying a knife? Um, I partially answered this question in the beginning. Um, I'm not sure why other people carry knives, but for me, I feel like that a multi-tool with a knife, for instance, I like to carry my Swiss Army knife, the Super Tinker, is great to have in your pocket because I like to open boxes with that. Um, whenever I need to cut um, maybe gaffer's tape, tape or loose string on my cloth clothing, need a screwdriver, um, tweezers are on that super tinker as well. It's very handy just to have it in your pocket. Um, admittedly, I don't use it like every single day, but I use it at least like three times a week. So I can highly recommend it to have something like that in your pocket. It's better to have it than to need it. Um, but I don't know why other people carry knives. That is actually a pretty interesting question. And it's something that's, I know what you mean that on every EDC picture on Instagram, you always see a knife um, but it also it's it's a very easy thing to photograph maybe that's also a reason it's very shiny it has always good geometry therefore it looks nice in the picture maybe that's the reason why it's always in those EDC sets and maybe they don't use it that much uh, but yeah, as I said, I personally like to use a knife in my setup. Um, question by AXPHG. Suitcase suitable for office work with sleeves for pen, water bottle and can fit a 14 inch laptop. That's unfortunately a question I cannot answer because I never carry a suitcase. Um, I. Yeah, I have no experience with that. Uh, I prefer backpacks and um, yeah, that's why I can't, unfortunately I can't answer that, that question. But AXPHG has a second question, which is why are most bags in black, in the color black? And um, I think the easy answer is, or the most obvious answer for that is that that's what most people like, um, especially in these times where many brands um, go the Kickstarter route. Um, it's easier or more efficient to produce one color that everyone likes um, because every single color that you have to produce is more difficult, I assume, um, or I speculate. Um, so it's more efficient to produce just this one color that everyone likes, but I'm totally with you. I would 
love to see more colors, but I can understand, for instance, there was this bright red Evergoods um, CPL uh, 24. That color looked awesome, but uh, that was just a limited run. And yeah, I can totally understand that making a bag in that bright color is not for everyone. So before they um, have lots of those bags in stock and no one sells them, I can understand that they make a limited run and stick with black bags, have them in stock because they know that they will sell them. Um, yeah, I think that is probably the reason why most bags are black. Um, next question by Oi Not Nef. Not sure if I pronounced that correctly. OnePlus 7 Pro camera after update. This is the OnePlus uh, 7 Pro that I have bought, I think it's now already one month and I'm really happy with this phone. It's very big and the screen is almost too big so I have lots of, um, how you call it, mispresses. So I, whenever I touch the bottom to press space, I sometimes hit the home key and stuff like that. Um, yeah, that's for now the only gripe that I have. But uh, the, um, the question was about the camera. The camera is awesome. Um, it's probably not as good like a DSLR or a Google Pixel phone or probably not as good as the one uh, iPhone, but it's great for, uh, for a phone. <laughs> it's great for a phone. And I think for Instagram and stuff like that, it's more than enough. Um, I didn't see that many changes with the um, camera update. It was already very good before the update, in my humble opinion. Um, the only improvement that I can see is in, in the night mode. But honestly, I rarely to never use the night mode. So yeah, if you're looking for a good phone with a good camera, and you don't mind the size, I can still, or I can recommend this OnePlus 7 Pro phone, um, but I will do a review about it. Um, next question by Matthew Ned Nadal, Nad Nado. sorry if I mispronounce your name, Matthew. What would you consider to be the best bag for a heavy carrier, but is also light when it isn't full? Um, Oh, the opposed this bags, those are very light and can fit a lot of stuff into them. Um, I wouldn't consider them, as you said, heavy carrier bags. So I assume that you mean with heavy carrier bag, bags that can um, fit a lot of stuff. I, I assume that that's what you mean by that. Um, and the opposed this invisible backpacks are EDC bags, so around 21 to 22 liters. But in my experience, I was able to fit a lot of stuff into them. And when they're empty, you could actually fold them up and make them very small. Um, there is also the invisible carry-on bag, which is around 30 liter. Um, also very light when it's, em when it's empty. But if you want a bag that's lightweight and carries a lot of stuff, I can always recommend the Attitude Supply ATD1. Um, that's a great bag. Um, I love using that bag. Um, let's see, that I s let me s check if that's all the questions from Instagram before I continue with your questions in the chat. Yeah, that's, that were all the questions from Instagram. Now let's check the questions from um, the chat. So, um, first question, uh, lots of uh, welcomes and hi. Hel 
Hello to everyone in the chat and uh, thanks for joining this live stream. I know there were, wasn't a video last week, but as I mentioned in the video before that, there is a lot going on at the moment um, where I have to organize a lot of stuff. Um, so YouTube videos uh, didn't have a lot of time or room in my life at the moment but there will be a new video tomorrow so the first question in the video um oh, let's see lots of oh by uh white cave what bag would you recommend as a carry-on for international travel um i usually don't travel with the carry-on bag for one simple reason because I just wasn't able to manage to travel with just one bag. Um, I always have a check-in bag uh, because I travel with lots of equipment if I work, travel for work and I also travel with a dop kit that has lots of liquids in it. Uh, for instance, I wear hard contact lenses and the liquids for my contact lenses, the bottles are pretty big. Um, so I can put them in the carry-on bag and my, I'm not sure if it's advisable to put the uh, contact lens liquids into a different bottle. Um, I don't know if that co contaminates the liquid um, in terms of, yeah, I don't know, bacteria or something. So I prefer having the original clean or what do you say, the bottle where the liquid is in um, instead of pouring that in a different bottle. Um, so that bottle is pretty big and it's not allowed as a carry-on. Um, that's another reason why I never travel with the carry-on bag but from my experience with traveling like for vacation for a weekend trip um, I really like the um, what's it hold on a second this bag the the topo design 40 liter um, travel pack that's a great bag with lots of organization and yeah i can highly recommend this bag i was actually able to fit a lot of stuff into this bag 40 liters stretches a little bit the allowance of what some airlines consider um, carry-on friendly but there is a smaller version i think like a 33 liter version of this bag and yeah, I can highly recommend this bag if you manage or if you want to travel with just one bag. And it's also not as heavy empty. It's heavy. I mean, compared to an EDC backpack, it's heavy empty. But um, considering all of the materials and all of the compartments that you have in this bag, it's not that heavy. So, next question. Any good uh, raining jacket for riding? I'm, do you mean riding a bicycle or riding a motorcycle? I'm, I assume you mean riding a bicycle. I'm currently testing the Alchemy Equipment AEM 105. Um, I have been testing this jacket for quite a while and it's an awesome jacket. It will be in a future video. Um, unfortunately, it's very expensive, but from my testing, it's a jacket that you can wear all year long and it's a really good rain jacket. Um, but other than that, I actually would take a look at a um, motorcycle rain jacket, uh, rain jackets. I have one from Revit. Um, those are actually really good rain jackets because they are designed to keep away water um, that is pressed against you 
due to the um, wind from riding the motorcycle. So those are actually very good uh, protection against rain. Um, yeah, but other than that, I actually, oh no, I have, <laughs> I have a rain coat from Muji, which makes me look like, like a murderer from a horror film. Um, it was really cheap. It looks terrible, but it keeps the ra uh, away the rain perfectly. I think it's around like 20 bucks on, um, at Muji. Um, but other than that, I don't have that many rain jackets, although it's raining quite a lot in Hamburg. Um, so next question, let me see. Oh no, I scrolled down too far. Um, uh, 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 by, oh, that question for, was from Nas Izar. Um, By CC, don't think people carrying knives around as EDC is a great idea. Doesn't make the world a safer place. Yeah, in regards to crime and safety, obviously carrying a knife isn't great. Um, there are many stupid people out there and Germany is actually thinking of making laws stricter in terms of knife laws. Let's see how that goes. But in my opinion, these knife laws are pretty difficult um, because, for instance, you aren't allowed to carry a knife with a, with a liner lock in Germany, but you are basically allowed to carry around a sushi knife, um, which is kind of stupid in my opinion, um, just because those knives are in different, I don't know how you call it, in different categories. The one knife, the sushi knife, is considered a tool, while the other knife is considered a weapon. Although I would argue that the sushi knife, being bigger and probably even more sharper, is even more dangerous <laughs> than uh, a folding knife. Um, but I totally understand where you're coming from and considering that there are many stupid and dangerous people out in the world carrying a knife or being allowed to carry a knife could or is a dangerous thing. Um, but that's a completely different topic. Um, PC said better than guns? Probably. Um, yeah, we in Germany we have pretty strict gun law, so you aren't allowed to carry around guns. Um, but as I said, that's a completely different discussion, which would probably lead to a lot of anger and angry people. So let's just leave that discussion out. It's too political. Um, so by Flora uh, Wirtz, or Flora Wirtz, will you ever get your hands on a peak design? I hope. I really hope Peak Design is so high on my list and I feel like everyone has reviewed one, but I just haven't gotten around to actually A, seeing one or getting one, um, but I hope I will get one in the future. I'm working on it. Hope Maybe Karyology can get me one in the future. Um, days of one. Uh, Really hope my question gets answered. Yeah, I think I answered your question that you sent from Instagram. All the rock off. What up, Bo? Um, hey, <laughs> thanks for joining the live stream. Um, quick plug. Uh, go to All the Rock Off's uh, YouTube channel and Instagram. He has a lot of great content about bags and go rock stuff. In terms of Go Rock, I think he's even more knowledgeable than I am. So if you have a question about Go Rock bags, definitely go to him. Um, uh, by Toby Sap, C Z A P, is, is that correctly? Um, do you know the company Erz from Hungary? Uh, unfortunately, no, I don't know them, but I will definitely Google them if they're good. Um, by Flight SciTech. So I really liked the concept that Boundary Supply Errand brought, but was disappointed in the executions. Can you suggest a similar 
style slash layout bag? Hmm, that's a good question. I agree with you. I also like the concept and the design of the Boundary Errand uh, bag. Overall, I think Boundary Supply has a lot of great design cues and great features with all of the bags. I really love the primer system, but the Boundary Supply Errand bag just yeah, I would say it just wasn't for me because of the features and um, especially the overall capacity of the bag. Um, so if you want a similar style bag, hmm, that's a good question because it is a very unique design. I would say in terms of feel or design direction and feature set and choices of materials I would highly suggest to take a look at um, not boundaries so uh, um, Citadel what was the Citadel hold on uh, damn it Citadel backpack what's the company I forgot it's it's on it's on my lips, but Black Amber, that, <laughs> that, was, that was the company I was looking for. Uh, take a look at the Black Amber design um, Citadel backpacks. I think those have great quality in terms of how they're built, great choices of materials, great features. Um, yeah, I, I, I think if you like the Boundary Supply design language. I wouldn't say they are similar, but I, f I kind of feel like if you like the boundary supply errand, I assume that you would, or I speculate that you could also like the black amber design. Um, other than that, Chrome Industries makes also great bags that have lots of compartments similar to the errant um, backpack but yeah I would say take a look first at black amber and then maybe at chrome um, yeah but it was a shame that the errant backpack wasn't that I didn't like using the bag but in terms of features design build quality it was a great bag um, Gary Horn, what's your favorite motorcycle bag for commuting? That's definitely, um, in terms of comfort and safety, it's definitely the Velomachi roll top bag because it's great on your back. You don't feel the bag at all when you're riding with the bag. That being said, the capacity of the bag is not that great because it has abrasion resistant material and this material doesn't have lots of give or flex it is rather stiff um, for safety reasons so you can't load that much into it but for work for instance like um, a computer documents and other stuff like that it's great um, Another bag that's also great, um, I always recommend this, I, I think I have recommended this bag like three times already in this uh, live stream, it's the Attitude Supply ATD1. Um, I really like that bag because of the flexibility and the Go Rock uh, Evergoods kind of feel in terms of choices of materials and build quality. Um, the only thing that you need to be aware of that bag the, due to the design, when you close the clamshell, you need to be sure that both zipper pulls are at the bottom. Because if they aren't at the bottom, due to the design, you can see it in the review, the clamshell could open by itself because there is a lot of pull or weight on the zippers. And if there, the zippers are at the top, there is the possibility that the zippers open by themselves or get pulled open due to the weight by themselves. Um, 
Oh, oh, there's a follow-up to that question. I'm looking for good organization. Oh, okay. Um, then I would say... Hmm. Life Behind Bars. Um, I haven't tested the new version yet, but the Life Behind Bars Peloton, that's actually a bicycle um, or a bag designed for bicycle riders, but it's still great for a motorcycle as well. They have a new version which actually has this material that has a lot of reflectivity integrated. It's a roll top backpack and it, uh, it has a lot of organization. Um, the only downside with that bag is they that's made in Indonesia, so you have to um, expect some sh higher shipping fees and potential custom fees. But that's a great bag. You can see a very old review on my channel and there is a new version. So I'm not sure how much they have changed in the new version, but uh, back then I really enjoyed that bag. Um, by Penguin... By Penguin's Hawk 151007. I purchased a couple of air product products based on your reviews. What products do you expect air to produce in the future? That's a good question. Um, I have reviewed and tested a lot of air uh, bags <laughs> or bags from air. Um, and I really like, I think I like all of them. Um, I really enjoy how they design the bags and combine them with with the materials and build and feature set. Um, I mean, they have already so many bags in their portfolio. They have EDC bags, they have carry-on bags. Um, I would love to see something like the Gorok Bullet, Bullet 10 liter bag. Um, Something that's that's still a backpack but very small and doesn't necessarily is designed for um, for everyday no for work related items. So in my bullet 10 liters I never carry a laptop. It doesn't fit. Um, but that bag is great for like short day trips going to the city so you can carry like a water bottle a camera maybe your jacket stuff like that in that bag so it's right in between a edc bag and a sling bag um so sling bags that i personally like are like two to four liters um preferably only two liters and obviously in those two liters you can't fit the camera easily maybe a very small point and shoot but not my um sony a6300 um you can't fit a jacket so having something in 10 liters is great for those situations i would love to see how air designs a bag like that maybe like like a mini duffel pack or something something like that not sure if they will do that but yeah that would be great to see from them um by eric hasenstab looking for an 8 to 10 liter sling i have a canne option but it's not waterproof yeah, funny that you, uh, the, this question is right after i talked about that um i don't like um 10 oh well, no let's start to uh, answer differently i don't like sling bags that are bigger than four liters because i don't like having lots of weight just on one shoulder 10 liters okay you could argue that that wouldn't be that heavy um so that doesn't strain your shoulder that much um but I haven't tested any 10 liters. Sl oh no, that's not true. The Code of Bell uh, sling bags, those are around the 10 liter mark. Um, the build quality is great. All those bags from Code of Bell remind me of Black Amber. Um, but I only tested one of the uh, Code of Bell sling bags. You can see that in the sling bag roundup video that is on my channel. 
Um, but other than that, I haven't tested that many sling bags with that capacity, unfortunately. Um, so I'm just uh, scanning through questions. So thank you for all of the um, kind words in between. Um, but, and as I said, yeah, just sc uh, scan through the questions. Um, by Jan Lubbers, have you had the chance to take a look at the Wanderer Provoke backpack yet? I have mine now for half a year now, but still would love to hear your take on it. I haven't tested or I haven't uh, reviewed or seen that back in person yet, but I would love to. I've seen the new Kickstarter um, and that bag looks awesome. So I probably will try to get that one before the Provoke, but maybe I can get both bags and then uh, give you my take on that. But yeah, as I said, the new one that they launched on the Kickstarter, that looks very unique and very interesting. Would love to test that out. Um, but let me know, how do you like the Wanderer Provoke? I mean, you have tested it for half a year. Do you like it? Are there any flaws or drawbacks that you might want to share with uh, everyone? Um, oh, Penguin's Hug says it's Seiko is pronounced Se Aiko. Se 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 Aiko? Is that correct? Did I pronounce it correctly now? I'm not sure. Um, by Strumento, do you have any great ways to carry coins? No, <laughs> I always carry, I always put, no, that I 80% or may, probably 90% of the time I pay everything with my ATM card. If I pay with cash, I usually put all the coins in my front pocket. And as soon as I am home, I have a giant piggy bank, which is basically this huge water bottle where I put all the coins into it. And whenever this bottle is full, I will go to the bank with it and see how much is in it. And depending on how much it is, I will buy something with it. <laughs> so I never have coins in my pocket. I only have the change in my pockets and then I empty out my front pockets. Um, yeah, for the main reason, because I 90% of the time I pay with my cards. Um, by Amrazen, what's your number one favorite bag? I think that's, Probably the most asked question that I get, like always. Um, I don't have one bag, but I would split that up in categories. Hold on, I want, I need something to drink. Mm. Let's split that up a little bit into. Um, categories. The bag that I have a lot of emotions with, um, that is the GORUCK GR0, which is now called a GR1 21 liters. Um, I love that bag because this that was the bag that started this channel. It's also a great bag in terms of functionality, durability and looks. That being said, I haven't used it that much because I test so many bags. Um, the next bag that I really like that is something that I always recommend um, is the Evergood CPL24. Um, I recommend that bag a lot if you want something like the Gorok, but you are not sure of the military style look um, because obviously the, the, the look of the Gorok is not always appropriate in offices for instance. So if you want the same build quality but want a different look then I always recommend the CPL24. 
If you want something with the same build quality, but you want something with an expandable main compartment, then it's the Attitude Supply at, uh, ATD1. That's actually the bag that I have used the most the last 12 months, or at least as long as I have the bag. Um, my favorite bag for motorcycle riding is the Velomachi Roll Top bag. My favorite gym bag is the Air Gym Duffel. My favorite or now let's let's uh let's strike the favorite i'm not there's so many good bags but another bag that i also really like is the opposed opposed this invisible bags because as i mentioned before it's so lightweight and the material is very has a lot of give but still it's very durable and therefore you can fit a lot of stuff into them and all of the compartments are as the name suggests hidden or invisible so there's a lot of organization without you seeing that um, a carry-on bag that i like the most is as i mentioned before the topo design uh, travel bag yeah, lots of great bags. The Black Emma Citadel, also a great bag. Um, Heimplanet also makes great bags. It's hard. Um, it's hard to say which bags I re which are my favorite. I, probably it's easier to say which bags I don't like, <laughs> but I don't want to bash a company or a bag for that matter. But there are a couple of videos on my channel of bags that I don't really enjoyed using. Um, by M. M. Tobin 1000. Hey Bo, would you consider a high quality full grain leather bag? I really like the feel of leather, um, especially on wallets, on belts, on um, the strap of my watch. Um, but I'm not sure if I like leather bags in general um, because leather adds a lot of weight um, depending on how thick the leather is of course um, depending on how everything is stitched together it could add a lot of bulk um, my wife has a great small leather backpack um, that she doesn't like like typical um, how you call it women's bags or purses or stuff like that. So she has this small little leather bag that where the leather got so soft um, and it feels great. And the leather doesn't add that much bulk to it because it already already has worn in quite a bit. That being said, it still has some weight to it because it's leather, but it's only like this big or something. So um, it doesn't really matter. But if I consider the amount of stuff that I usually carry, I would need a leather bag that is around 20 liters. And I'm not sure how heavy that would get. Um, so I never, really considered a leather bag yet um, but I'm I'm looking forward to actually test a full grain leather bag in the future hopefully I find one um, username one any Belroy bags planned in the future yes I have one can you see Let's see, this blue thing is a Belroy bag, but I'm not allowed to show it to you yet because it's still in development. Um, I'm actually making, or um, they sent that to me um, early so I can potentially give some feedback uh, about it. Um, I'm actually not 100% sure if I'm allowed to make a review once it's ready because it is a prototype. Um, Belroy makes great bags. Um, not all of them 
in terms of looks are what I personally like but those bags are a great choice for school for the office um, because they have lots of organization they are well built the choices of materials are very premium um, and they have a look to them that looks professional um, I know that many people that are working in the office always say ah, I can't wear a backpack because I kind of feel that it looks stupid on me um, or not professional and I feel like a Bellroy backpack still makes you look professional um, at least in my opinion I don't know if you wear a suit for the office probably a backpack isn't yeah, you need you probably need to pull it off, but um, yeah, I still think that they look very good. Um, did I answer the question? Yeah, I answered the question. Yeah, but so there is some or at least one Bellroy bag coming in the future. I'm not sure if it's going to be a review, but hopefully I'm allowed to show it to you in the future. Um, da, da, da. Um, oh, M. Tobin 1000 said Saddlebag Leather Company has the bag, best leather on the market for bags. I will Google them. I don't. I haven't heard of them before. I think, but I will check them out. Thanks for the uh, heads up. Um, by Jonathan Quisenberry. Is there any way to get the Air Oshman sling bag from outside Japan? As far as I know, uh, you can only get them from Oshman Japan. But I heard some rumors, not from Air directly, but I heard um, some of my uh, subscribers told me that there is a rumor that they might make a similar version for the international market, but I haven't heard anything official from Air. Um, hopefully, because it's a great sling bag. Um, damn no. You know what the problem is with this chat window of the YouTube live stream? If you push the or if you scroll too far, it jumps down the whole way to the bottom, and I don't know where I was with the last question. Uh, um, where was I? Ah. By Zerrand. I'm looking for a. Uh, for a good everyday bag for work and casual carry. I'm always taking my 11 inch iPad Pro with me and a 15 inch MacBook Pro. I'm mostly using the train and looking for an anti-theft bag. Any recommendations? Um, the last anti-theft bag that I reviewed, I didn't like it that much. Um, I actually forgot the name. If you only carry the iPad Pro, the MacBook, and maybe a couple of other small items, and don't plan to carry anything more than that, or you don't need ex expandability. Then I would recommend, actually, would recommend the Boundary Supply Errand um, because the way it opens on the side, there is this buckle. So it does. Uh, you can't just open it uh, from behind. Then the top loading opening has this magnetic opening. So it's not that easy to get into it if it's on your back. Um, and all of the compartments and features are, I think, would fit pretty well for your use case. Um, the only thing that you need to keep in mind is that if you want to carry more than the stuff that you need for work, it could get a little bit crowded inside, but it's nothing too bad. So as I said, if you only want to carry your work items, then you might want to take a look at the Aaron backpack. Um, by Donald uh, Perreault. I'd like to see more sling bag uh, type 
sling bag type bags for EDC. Um, yeah, I, if I get more sling bags, I will definitely do another uh, roundup video. But for now, I only the only new or only two new sling bags that I have here at the moment are the Camelback Pivot that you have seen in the new gear discoveries and a Bellroy sling bag. And I'm currently reviewing the Bellroy sling bag. Yeah, hope to uh, show you that review in the future. Um, da, da, da. By Sebastian Gomez Chasson or Chacon. Um, any updates from Osaka All and their stolen content? Um, for those of you who don't know, there's a video on my channel that's called They Stole My Content or something like that. And there was this company that's uh, named Osaka All, Owl um, that basically 100% copied the air travel bag and the orbit key, if, or was it the secret wallet? I'm not sure. They at least they stole the air travel bag, and with that, they actually copied my air travel bag video review and used it to promote that counterfeit or that copied version of the air travel bag. So I sent over a couple of copyright claims or cop is it claims or strikes? Strikes because they used my footage to 100% to promote or advertise uh, a counterfeit product or rip-off product. And yeah, I haven't checked on them lately. Hopefully they haven't continued using my stuff. But unfortunately, there's, there wasn't a lot that I was able to do because A, it would be an international lawsuit, which is very difficult and B, they uploaded the videos with different names and stuff like that and there wasn't a really clear address to it. So yeah, that's probably something that I have to anticipate in the future that people will steal my content. Um, that's probably the bigger that a channel get, the more people will just copy the stuff. Um, yeah, so no really bigger updates, but if any one of you ever sees one of my footage or content on a different channel, please let me know and then I will take a look. Um, mm -hmm. By M. Tobin 1000 also, don't you think that today's sling bag is simply yesterday's fanny pack? Um, and we all know how the fanny pack went downhill. Yeah, that's something I addressed in that um, sling bag roundup video. Um, I, in that video I said sling bags are basically fanny packs on steroids. Um, and in a way I agree with you that they are fanny packs, but to me they are way more useful and better designed than those old school fanny pack. Take a look at the Air Oshman sling bag. I personally think that thing looks awesome and is very useful. Um, and I personally can highly recommend them. Um, especially in the summer, those things are awesome. When you're like wearing shorts and don't have many pockets for your phone wallet keys, then a sling bag is great. But obviously, yeah, they are fanny packs and it's just a matter of how you use them. Um, some of them look a little bit like man purses. For instance, that Balroy to me kind of looks like a uh, man purse or the um, Funk Street messenger bag that I reviewed a couple of weeks back also kind of looks like a man purse. Um, yeah. They are fanny packs, but I feel like they can be very useful. Um, mm -mm -mm. By Anna Anita. Hey Bo, following Happy on Instagram and I'm happy to know she is well again. 
Happy, for those of you who don't know, uh, is one of my dogs. She's right down here, so that's why I'm always like looking down. Uh, two weeks ago she was very sick and uh, that got my wife and I very worried, but now she's well again. And so yeah, thank you very much uh, Anna for, um, for your wishes. Um, uh, uh, um, next question. Mm, let's see. Um, is there another question? Um, by Irfan Zaini, what do you think of the Topo Design 30 liter travel bag? Yeah, I mentioned the 40 liter travel bag in the beginning of this live stream, and I think that's a great bag, but it's also very big, and I'm not sure if you can actually use that bag on an airplane. It really scratches the tolerance of uh, carry-on friendly bags. So I would think that the 30 liter version is a very good option. I really enjoyed the Topo Design uh, travel bag. Um, yeah, by Simiyami Drew. He or she asked, what's your stance on immigration crisis in Germany? That's a very political question and um, that's something we probably could discuss very intensively and like everything political that could result in a very heated discussion. So I will skip that question if that's all right for you. Um, by Ten Sin Ha. Do you carry any messenger style bags at all? Um, no, um, I like messenger bags for their looks, but I don't like, I always carry so much equipment and most of the bags that are used for EDC, as soon as they are full, they reach about 10 kilograms of weight. And having all that weight, or let's say in between, eight to 10 kilograms because I have my keyboard, all my peripherals, cables, my laptop, stuff like that, my water bottle, and that gets very heavy. And having all that weight on just one shoulder is very exhausting. And I think, or I assume that can't be good on your back for a longer period of time. That is why I don't like sling bag or no uh, messenger style bags for EDC for sling bags which are only which I prefer only to be four liters there I like to use those one-sided load um, but yeah in terms of looks and functionality I like messenger bags but in term in practice with my personal use case that's just too much. If I would only carry like an iPad or a 13 inch computer uh, with just my um, charger, then totally I would definitely carry a messenger bag. But for my use case, that's just uh, would get too heavy on, one, on my shoulder. Um, uh, 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 by Johnny Bailey, thoughts on nomadic backpacks. I would love to check out one of their bags. Um, I have only seen them on, the, uh, on their website. I think their features um, are very interesting. I think they have this one um, duffel style bag where you can like swing it up and then it's a backpack, swing it down and then it's a duffel bag. That looks very interesting. Not sure how practical that is, but I would love to check them out in the future. Um, that's something I always, just like the Peak Design and Wanderer bags, that's definitely something I have been saying for a couple of months, but I just, I don't know. I honestly have no idea why I haven't tested them yet or why I haven't gotten the bags yet. Probably because those are the three brands that have been, also have been tested quite a lot outside the bag enthusiast world, like the Peak Design have, has been tested by so many YouTubers and camera people. Maybe that's the reason why I haven't gotten a Peak Design bag yet. Um, maybe 
YouTube is oversaturated with peak design uh, reviews. Um, and what's the next question? Um, by Daniel Handojo. Hey Bold, can you recommend any good camera bags for daily use with good style in mind and 20 to 30 liters max? I personally um, like to use camera cubes. So having that actually um, expands your choices of backpacks. Just get a regular bag, any bag for that matter, and then just use a camera cube and put that inside uh, your regular backpack. Um, but if you actually want, it also depends on how much camera gear you want to carry. But the boundary supply primer system, for instance, has an integrated camera cube, which fits a camera and I think two lenses or something like that. If that's enough for you, I can highly recommend that bag. Um, Black Amber has also camera cubes that you can integrate into their bags. But yeah, as I said, get a camera cube and put that in your regular backpack. That's a great choice in my opinion. If you need more gear, at the mo moment I don't know good camera bags if you need more gear. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. By Yukarin Aikayama, do you still use the ATD-1 backpack? Yeah, you can watch, I think, a lot of questions in the beginning of this live stream. Yes, I have been recommending and using this bag quite a lot. It's a, it's a great bag. It's very versatile. Um, Jan Lubbers, thanks for answering my question. Do you mean the Wanderer Duo Kickstarter? This indeed looks awesome. Yes, I mean the Duo uh, backpack. That that's an awesome design. If I if I understand it correctly, you can actually open it from the top and then it folds out into a clamshell and fold out the sides and then you have all those compartments. And if you want to put a camera in there, you can like flip the bottom open to or flip the bottom up to make like a protected cube inside that looks awesome i would love to test out that bag a very unique design um yeah the follow-up question by yukarin aikayama um I understand that you have to review the other bags. So maybe a follow-up question. What backpack do you keep coming back to? And yeah, that's the ATD one by Attitude Supply. That's, I mean, if you want, I can't praise that bag enough. There are some drawbacks, obviously. No bag is perfect. And you can see those drawbacks in my review. But if you want the build quality of uh, Evergood CPL24, but you want expandability and you want the best of both worlds of roll top and a clamshell opening backpack, then that bag is great. There are There is room for improvement because I have the prototype version, but that one is already pretty good. Um, I'm looking forward to see a second version of that, which has some improvements to it. Um, but it's a great bag. I can recommend it. I can highly recommend that bag. Um, Oh, that's interesting. Jan Libbers uh, answered my question. He shared that I have the smaller Provoke 21 and I still love it. Very compact for, way, for the way to the office and in brackets, I use public transport. It's expandable for the way back over to the, to the supermarket and, and an extra pouch in the main compartment. Yeah, that's what I assume. It's great to hear that you, like, uh, that you enjoy the Provoke. Uh, 21. I have only heard good things about that bag, so I'm looking forward if I can test that bag as well. Um, mm -mm -mm. Username 1. That blue bag looks like the updated version of the Classic Backpack Plus. They display, it, they display their under, uh, unreleased prototypes at pop-up events. 
that's good to know but for uh, NDA reasons I can't confirm or deny that what you're saying but yeah it's it's a it's a Balroy backpack um, where Um, by McConzo One, what's the best everyday backpack brand you like? Um, yeah, I, I answered. If you, uh, I think you can skip in the live stream, or at, um, or at least tomorrow when the live stream is online as well, you can skip to the middle. I think of the live stream where I answer the question, what are my favorite bags, and there I recommend a couple of brands that I enjoy um, by praxis cat have you seen the new wanderer duo kickstarter yeah i've seen that and as i mentioned just before this that's definitely a bag i would love to review in the future um, eric hernandez why don't you do an everyday vlog uh, good morning, by the way. It's 9 12 a.m. in California. Wow, thanks for joining me. I, I assume you are at work. Thanks to every one of you for joining this live stream. I, I am aware that some of you just gotten to work, some of you are already at work and have lunch, some of you are in the middle of the night watching this. So, thank you very much for joining this live stream. And to answer your question, Eric, why don't I do an everyday vlog? Hmm. For the simple reason, because my everyday isn't that exciting. Um, that's one reason. And if my day is exciting, for instance, if I am at a job and editing a commercial, I always have to sign NDAs, which is for those of you who don't know, non-disclosure agreement, uh, where I just can't share anything about the project or I'm not allowed to talk about them. So I can't vlog when there is actually something interesting to vlog about. And um, another reason is I find it very hard. Um, I see so many vlogs that I honestly don't find that interesting. I think Casey Neistat really perfected the vlogs um, in a way. It's always interesting to look at. And uh, as a film editor, I know how hard that is, especially if your day isn't that interesting. I think with Casey Neistat, it's he his life is kind of cheating because he lives like in a city that always has at least or he lives in a city that provides a very interesting background um, and at least the way he shows it in his vlogs in the past he always travels a lot or has at least something interesting to showcase so so that's why I call it cheating a little bit for his vlogs because there's always even if he doesn't do anything interesting there is always something interesting in the background and i feel like my life isn't that interesting so it would be very hard to vlog um, but i was contemplating to to vlog or to wrap my head around a concept of a vlog that is interesting to watch. I'm not sure if it is advisable to put that on the on this channel um, because I'm not sure if that potentially would alienate some of you, my subscribers. Um, I'm not sure. What do you think? Uh, what do you who watch my channel or watch this live stream now, I assume that you are like one of the hardcore fans of this channel. Would you actually consider watching a vlog? And if so, what would you love to see in that vlog? I don't think I could grant an everyday vlog, but maybe I would be able to do like, 
don't know, maybe a monthly thing where I like put in together all the most interesting things during the month or something like that. Would that be something that interests you? Um, yeah, let me know in the com uh, in this chat or also in the comment or uh, the comment section of this video as soon as it goes live. Um, yeah, but yeah, as you can see, um, that's something I always like think about if that's actually something I could pull off. Um, not not necessarily because I want to vlog my life, but more in terms of could I actually edit, because I am a film editor, could I actually edit my life in a way that would result in an interesting, entertaining video for you to watch? That's something that I ask myself all the time. Maybe I will start that, but let me know in the comments and in the chat, is that something that you would be interested in? Um, what's the next question? By Black Hawks 3. Hey Bo, what are your favorite zipper pulls? Classic metal ones? Paracord? Paracord with shrink tube? Or paracord with shrink tube? I dislike the ones on my errand and think about modding it. There is a video or a tutorial on my channel that is called like how to mod zipper pulls and my favorite are um, zip metal zipper pulls with paracord with shrink tube on them. Um, I think they, especially if you use like a different color, A, you can see them very fast, um, B, with the paracord they don't rattle that much um, and C, it's very easy to grab and to, yeah, to use them. Um, Furthermore, if you do it correctly with, or you, if you leave some space with the paracord, you can actually like um, knot them or interweb them together to make them kind of like like anti-theft uh, thing. So you can e just easily zip them open. So using paracord on them is great. Uh, in that tutorial, I think you, I provided some Amazon affiliate links to all the stuff that you need. The, um, you can actually use a hair dryer to shrink um, heating, tu heating tubes, but I would recommend to get one of those um, hot wind thingies, hot <laughs> dryers from Amazon. It did cost me like 14 euros. That makes um, shrinking those tubes very easy. Um, and yeah, you can see that video in my channel, um, how to mod zipper poles. Um, by Johnny Bailey, test the Nomadic 30 liter travel pack, not a duffel bag, it isn't worth it. Thanks for the heads up. Yeah, if I uh, review that, I think the 30 liter version is probably the way to go. Um, uh, Next, is there another question? By days of one, Yobo, what about the 511 Rush series? What do you think of it? You can actually see the review of the Rush 12 on my channel. I made that like, I think three or four weeks ago. I called that the best bang for your buck. Great bag, highly can recommend it. If you don't mind the very, let's say aggressive military look. Um, uh, is there another question? Mm, no. Yeah, that was about it with all the questions of this Q&A. Um, I mean, it's already been 90 minutes already. So thank you very much for joining this live stream and for all of your questions and i hope i answered all of the questions sufficiently for you um and yeah i can always say thank you very much for supporting me for watching my videos and tomorrow there will be a new 
EDC video which is called or a new series which is called searching for the best EDC and yeah it will be um, online tomorrow at 5 p.m. German time again thank you very much for watching and I see you in the next videos uh, stop